Welcome again to Kim and Ding's Baddock Mine. Uh, this video, I'm going to discuss how we're going to organise our trip for the Philippines next year. Uh, we're going over for just one month. The method I'm going to use to organise our trip is the same one I used for the last time I went over there. It worked for me, whether it works for you, that's up to you. But Basically it's all a matter of timing. You'll find as you get closer to the day of departure you're going to find things are going to start building up on you. There'll be things you forgot and things you forgot to remember and things you remembered not to forget, etc. Basically what you do is you prepare a list. And this is to avoid the two stages. One's known as pre-departure panic and the other one is post-departure panic. Now I can explain these in two separate little stories. The first one was when I was living in a block of units and I had a neighbour who got a posting to interstate to fill a vacancy which is work related. Uh, this person had never travelled long distances before and was initially excited and although he had three weeks advance notice panic set in the last few days. The uh, day before he was due to leave, he made four trips to the local supermarkets to buy things that he'd forgot to buy the previous trip. On the day of his departure, we could hear him running around upstairs. He must have visited each room at least four times, shutting windows. And he stopped when the taxi arrived, blew, blowing his horn frantically outside. Uh, we all relieved to hear the front door lock and saw him drive off. Later that day I walked past his front door. It was locked, the keys were in the lock, and the key ring was there too, with his car keys attached, his post office box key attached, work keys attached, keys to his luggage, keys to his storage. So rather than risk going in and being mugged by an intruder, we called the police. They inspected the flat and luckily for him it hadn't been ransacked but they did notice that alongside the front door was his carry-on baggage luggage he left it behind now we come to post-departure panic my last trip to the Philippines was an overnight trip we left at 11pm at night and one hour into the flight we had our little snack, midnight snack, and everyone was getting ready to take a nap for the next seven hours. Then we heard a woman's voice from the middle aisle. Honey, did you lock the bathroom window? There was a ten second pause and then you hear this male voice say roughly, yes dear. Five minutes later, she spoke again. Honey, did you unplug the microwave? Another five second poise. Yes, dear. This went on for 30 minutes and it really got about really got at our nose. And then the cabin crew came around and started turning all the lights down so we can have a nap. Then we heard her speak up again. She said, Honey, did you? And before she finished, about twelve passengers all said in unison, Yes, dear. Well, she stood up and you could see the whites of her eyes glowing like searchlights to look for someone to throw out the plane. Uh, everybody tended to go asleep, but I noticed the husband had a slight smile on his face in the dim light. So how do you avoid these panics? Well, as I said, it's timing. And what I did was I used Microsoft Excel as a spreadsheet and I recorded on it a list of everything I had to buy, everything I had to do. I think you end up with 200 you know, lines and you micromanage it. Then I put a left hand column in and I numbered them. And I numbered the tasks, number one being the last thing I had to do, which would be lock the door and put the keys in my pocket. Second last thing to do would be, number two, would be to put luggage outside the front door. And so on. You work on backwards like that 
till we come to the most recent thing, which would be probably uh, make sure your passport's up to date. Once I've got this list done up, I then get Microsoft Excel to sort it in a numerical sequence. Then you can see all the errors, you can go through and correct them, fix up duplications, probably add some extra ones, take some out, rearrange them. Then do another sort to get it into order. Once you've got this list sorted up to your satisfaction, you then do another sort, but this time you reverse the numbering from the highest number to the lowest. So you get the most recent thing on the top page, and on the last page you get the last instruction, which was lock the door, put keys in pocket. Then you go through and you look at the list, and you sort it up by time frame, by what had to be done each month, and then each week. So you spend, if you're six months out, you'll have five months stages. And then the last month, you do it on a weekly basis, and the last week is on a daily basis. And you put a blank row between each of the days. Once you've got that all sorted up, it looks nice and pretty, print it. And put it on a clipboard and put it near your kitchen table. Look at it each morning. Now what you do each day, you look at the task to be done on that day, and you do it. And as it's done, in the right hand side you put a nice big red tick saying it's finished. And you can forget about it. You don't have to backtrack. And you do this every day. And then each morning, when probably morning, look at the list and see what was outstanding from the previous day and try to get those done first. And what you can't do, write the number in the space. Eventually, when you get down to the last week, you'll have, say, maybe about 10, 11 things that haven't been filled. Stop and get them fixed up first. Then it gets to the stage where you just have only about two or three items, things to do. And that's on the last day. Everything else is done. So you can walk out that front door, lock, the car, lock it, put the keys in the pocket, and knowing that everything's been done, and you didn't have to retrace your steps. Simple as that. And when you're sitting back on the plane, and your wife turns around to say to you, Honey, did you mark everything up on the list? You only have to say, yes dear, once. Well, I hope that's useful. It might not be your cup of tea, you might think it's a bit of a waste, but whatever rocks your boat. But it worked for us, and we're going to do it again. Okay, see you next video. Take care in the meantime.